Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. I'm not at a all right. Uh, you heard there Paul Ryan dismissing, and he had to do this a lot, uh, the speculation that he's leaving. Here is the woman who started that speculation going to Politico reporter Rachel Bates. She broke the news. Rachel, very good to have you back with us. Uh, he is dismissing it, but I, I, I distinguish between that and denying it. Um, what, what, what are you hearing? Listen, we went into this story knowing full well that there was going to be some public pushback on this story. Speaker Paul Ryan can't be seen as a lame duck right now. He's got a bunch of negotiating, negotiating has to do with Democrats in the coming weeks. Um, so that would undercut his hand if he confirmed and admitted that he's going to be retiring at the end of next year. Um, not only that, but um, he wants to do a lot of things next year. And if he wants to do entitlement reform like he's talking about right now, he can't be acknowledging that he's leaving because that just really undercuts his political capital. However, if you look at the statements coming from their office and you look at the comments coming from him, um, they're very much not denying this, right? They're sort of saying it's speculation um, and saying the speaker's not going anywhere right now. Well, our story doesn't say that. It says he's going someone, somewhere at the end of the year. All right. So, was would that mean he still runs for re-election to his House seat yes. next year? And shortly after that, That's he would exactly step down. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. From our understanding, he's going to run. Um, he's going to help the House try to keep the Republican majority um, and try to get a bunch of stuff done this year. Uh, the question I have is. Can he do that? Right now, he's going to be doing some deals with Democrats in the coming weeks on spending, on immigration, what to do with the dreamer population. And a lot of people think he's going to strike a bipartisan deal. And that's going to potentially really anger his right flank in the House that is already itching and talking about a potential motion to vacate the chair, which is what they used with John Boehner right, to push him that. out. So, I remember that. Right. Is there any so possibility the question, that he, he, he steps down from the speakership but stays a congressman. I very highly doubt that. Really? It sounds like Paul Ryan wants to go go home and spend some time with his family. Um, it's hard to see how you stay in Congress after being speaker. Um, and the big question here is, if the conservatives move against him, does he just step aside earlier? I know there are a lot of, a lot of people on the Hill, both very high up in leadership, but also down to the rank and file, who are wondering if they say we're going to motion to vacate the chair. Does he just retire in January? So we'll be watching closely for that. Um, however, I think he has a lot of stuff he wants to do next year and will stick around and then resign in perhaps December of next year. You know, I always thought he was a, a riddle, you know, lost in a conundrum here. You know, he was Mitt Romney's running mate. Um, he didn't expect and often spoke out early on about the emerging Donald Trump candidacy, some things, policies, or words that, that he questioned and, and criticized. And then, like a good party soldier, you know, you work with your president of your party, but, but winced, I'm sure, the criticism that he was hearing from the White House uh, over himself, certainly uh, Mitch McConnell. Maybe he, it's that that's eating at him. What, what, what do you think? You know, it's really interesting. Um, just a year ago, I was writing stories about how conservatives were trying to look for a smoke signal from the White House about whether President Trump even wanted to work with Speaker Ryan because they had such a tense relationship right, right. on the on the trail. You know, Paul Ryan used to call him a joke in private. He talked about potentially withdrawing his endorsement at one point after the Access Hollywood uh, video remember. came out. But that. from what from what we understand. And from what we've seen, the relationship um, has gone a lot smoother than a lot of people anticipated, such that after this story came out yesterday, we understand President Trump called Speaker Ryan, said, are you leaving right now? Speaker Ryan said, I'm not going anywhere right now. And they, the White House basically said that the president would be, quote, very unhappy if Paul Ryan were to retire sooner. Um, so that's like a huge difference in their relationship. And I actually wonder if it might protect the speaker for the next year from a mutiny on his far right. Well, that's very interesting. Um, Rachel, I'd be remiss if I didn't get your take on where the tax cut battle stands and where the spending battle stands. Both are kind of joined at the hip of late, but what do you think? Right. I think they get tax reform done. Um, I think that uh, Rubio, uh, Marco Rubio, has obviously come out and said he's going to oppose the tax plan in recent days uh, because he wants a bigger child tax credit for, um, you know, your average Joe families. And I think he's going to get something for that. I think that um, this is someone that leadership believes they can win over. And I do think we'll see 
a tax bill signed into law by Christmas. Wow. Spending is a totally different issue. Um, basically, the Republicans on the Hill are so focused on trying to get tax reform done right now that they are not even talking about the other piece of this. Um, there's yet, no that's plan. So crucial, They're you pretty think? much all over the board. Yeah, but you think um, about that, Rachel, that's crucial because so many right. of the deals with a wink and a nod that were made to get tax cuts done were done under the promise of addressing some senators' concerns. John McCain about military spending, Susan Collins about you know doing something right. to protect people by losing the individual mandate, about those whose premiums might go up, you know? Yeah, that last one you mentioned, um, I think, could be particularly interesting next week. And uh, you're talking about the Obamacare subsidies. Right. Uh, Mitch McConnell promised Susan Collins, if you vote for this bill, we will enact Obamacare subsidies into law by the end of the year. Now, the House, Republicans will go absolutely nuts over there if the Speaker puts a bill like that on the floor. It's going to be really bad. Um, yeah. So that's going to, McConnell and Ryan are going to have to sit down and have a serious conversation about how do they do this. Um, I think what you might see is sort of everybody, there's some sort of goodwill agreement privately that we're going to address all these things in January. So a lot of us thought December was going to be just this awful, horrible month of breaking news, breaking news, deals this here right, and right, there. Right. But I think a lot of this is going to get kicked into January, both on spending, um, both on per perhaps CSR payments, these Obamacare subsidies, definitely on Dreamers, it sounds like. Um, so I think January is now where we're all going to be focusing. Amazing. We, we kicked the can for two weeks. Now the, uh, coming on the verge of an agreement that we'll kick it for another couple of weeks. And that's right. when we get serious. Well, sounds like one of my diets. Uh, Rachel, <laughs> great seeing you again. Thank you so much.